Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So this week I am going to answer, I'm actually going to answer three questions, only three, um, that I have been asked, not just recently, but over time. I, I get asked these questions quite regularly. So today... Um, I'm going to talk about uh, speeches. I'm not going to go way, 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 way into speeches because I am going to get an expert in to talk about speeches, but I'm going to tap around speeches today. I'm also going to be talking about, you know, the nicest wedding shoes. What are the best wedding shoes to get, Jenny? And then I always get asked, you know, what's the best wedding perfume? So what I'm going to do is talk about the perfumes that I come across, the shoes I come across, and my own take on speeches. So here we go. I'm going to start off with uh, um, the shoes. So the last message I got about shoes was from Kira, and she was like, Jenny, what are the best, nicest shoes for my wedding day? Uh, I can't pick. I have absolutely no idea what to go for. What do you think? So I always say this, you know, if I'm being asked an individual question about shoes or perfume. So for example, shoes, what, you know, what height of shoe do you normally like to wear or can you wear for a long time? Because when you think about your wedding day and the length of your wedding day. Um, it's a long time <laughs> and you're going to be in those shoes from early morning until late at night, unless you bring a second pair, which we'll talk about in a few minutes time. Um, so your shoes have to be functional. They have to go with the wedding dress, really. Um, and when I say functional, functional from, you know, a comfort point of view, but also um, from a practical point of view, um, so there's a pair of shoes I'll talk about in a second where they've diamonds, um, you know, on the toe. And a lot of the time, if you've got diamonds on the toes of your shoes, it's actually going to start pulling at the inside of your wedding dress and it can trip you up. So you, you need to sort of think about those sort of things when you're when you're picking your shoes. I mean, they're stunning and they're beautiful and they're photograph lovely, but are, are they actually going to go uh, with your dress uh, from a practical point of view? So um, let's start talking about the shoes that I come across. I come across a huge amount of Jimmy shoes and I love Jimmy shoes. They don't really love me though because a lot of them are very high. Um, actually, I wore Jimmy Choo's for my own wedding and they were beautiful. Um, they were sort of like an open toe and I had a sling back. So my little tip on sling back shoes, girls, is be very careful because as much as I love my Jimmy's, the sling back will only last for so long and then it starts coming down on the back of your on, on the back of your heel and you're constantly having to stop and pull it back up and you don't want to do that. Um, so a lot of sling back shoes, that kind of does happen to them. So just be careful if you want to go down that route. So um, let's talk about the shoes. So uh, the Jimmy Choo uh, shoe, like I said, is probably the most popular one and the Aveline 100 oversized bow shoe is absolutely when I say stunning, beyond stunning, there's not a hope in hell could I wear them because I'd fall over. But lots of you like high shoes. So there's a huge big bow that can either be pulled around the back or pulled around the front. Now, I did a wedding in lockdown. Let's not talk about lockdown too much. But anyway, um, the couple actually sort of did a little elopement on their own and um, it was stunning. So there was just the two of them, myself and I had Amy with me as well. And we had two witnesses from the hotel. And she just wore a beautiful kind of like gold coloured dress and she had a black pair of these jimmies on her. And they were, when I say to die for, um, could she walk in them? Not really. And she fell a couple of times and her dress was just up, up above her knee um, and she cut her knee on both knees. So I had to do a little bit of photoshopping in her um, photographs afterwards. So just be mindful about how comfortable they are um, and, you know, um, Look, we all want a beautiful pair of shoes, but just on your wedding day, you've got to be really careful because you're in them for a long time. Um, so another uh, pair of shoes that I come across a lot are the Amelia Floral um, Floral Ale Kitten Heels and they're by Bella Bella Bell. Um, they're stunning. Again, you know, um, they're small little heels and I would imagine that they're very, very comfortable to wear. So they are gorgeous. Um, Christian Louboutin shoes. Now, I come across a lot of these and there are a lot of different styles that people go for as well. You know, again, they're beautiful to photograph. They're red soles. They're just stunning. They're very expensive. Um, and I would imagine, girls, sorry, I'd imagine they're very, very difficult to, to walk in, but they are a very popular wedding shoe. Um, and once again, just make sure you try them on and make sure they are comfortable. 
Another Jimmy shoe um, is, I think it's called the Sicaria Pearl Embellishment. They're beautiful. So they've got like, um, I'm a big fan of pearls and I think pearls will never, never date. Um, and the pearls are all over the, the heel and they're, uh, you know, a, across the bow at the front and they really, really are beautiful. But a little tip uh, I have seen uh, shoes like that that are not Jimmy Choo's. Um, and if you Google them, you'll find them and you won't be paying as much for them. And they are just as nice and they are almost identical to the Jimmy Choo ones. Um, the loaf, I, I can never pronounce this, the loafler, Randall and um, Camellia. A pleated bow heel. I absolutely love these ones because um, they come in different colours as well. So they come in an ivory kind of white. They come in gold. They come in blue. And um, there's a lot of blue shoes that I would see. And these are very, very comfortable. Um, so they are. Now, I'm going to just be honest about the gold uh, ones. I bought the gold ones for my son's wedding. And the gold ones have a different texture on them. And when I say I couldn't have been more uncomfortable in them um, is no exaggeration. I was just so uncomfortable. And I thought everyone said these are really comfortable and they're not. Um, the cloth ones are, um, but the the fabric on the gold ones for me didn't work. Almost kind of like, you know, um, not the, the my, just underneath my toes, that whole area was just like absolutely killing me. And I could barely walk the following day in them. So or without them, I could barely walk in other shoes. So just be very careful again um, about the texture and about the fabric on the shoe as well and just make sure it's comfortable. Um, the oh the the Dior um, plumpets slingback are absolutely stunning and I do see a lot of those as well they're they're really really gorgeous and beautiful to photograph um, again another Jimmy Choo the um, hundred the Viola one hundred and ten feather tassel heel they're stunning um, but there's a lovely kind of you know just around the ankle there's this little strap and there's feathers on it and beautiful and I have seen so many brides give out about them though because underneath their dress. Um, the feather sometimes, you know, pulls at the dress, depending on the inside of the dress and depending on the fabric that's on the inside. Um, so just be careful um, and just be practical when it comes to picking your shoes uh, because they need to look gorgeous, but they also need to feel gorgeous. Um, and just my little tip about bringing a second pair of shoes, and I say this to all of my brides, um, you might want to go off and get a fabulous looking pair of shoes for your wedding. And I get that. Um, you also need to be comfortable. Um, so I would always suggest, girls, that you bring a second pair of shoes on the wedding day for when you are having your photographs taken because you are going to be outside. I have seen some videographers who kind of, you know, get the bride and groom to walk through grass and walk on stones and you don't want to ruin your heel. You don't want to be uncomfortable and you want to make sure that these shoes are going to last beyond your wedding day because you may want to wear them again. So bring a second pair of shoes that are going to work on your wedding day that you can pop on um, while you're having your family photos taken and you might want to pop them on later on as well. No one's going to see them. They're going to be under your dress. So just make sure that you are nice and comfortable. Let's talk about wedding perfumes. So again, you know, I've been asked, oh, I get asked this all the time. What's the best wedding perfume? What perfume do you like? You know, like it's all very well going off and buying a particular perfume for your wedding day. But have you ever worn it before? Is it nice? Is it nice after three hours? Is it nice after five hours? Is it your scent? Um, I wore Chloe perfume on my wedding day because, you know, I'd seen it in loads of photographs and everybody else is wearing it. Do I like it? No, I do not like it. I do not like the scent of it. I don't know what I was thinking of. I got it as a gift because I said I wanted it. Um, and yeah, it was the wrong um, scent for me. And yeah, it wasn't, wasn't for me at all. So I'm going to talk about the perfumes that I come across. But honestly, pick a perfume that you love and that you like the scent of and that your other half likes the scent of as well. And, and, and that's you. And it's not someone else. And you're going to think in six months, what in the name of Janie Mac was I thinking getting that? So the number one um, perfume that I come across all the time is Chanel number no. five. Now that is beautiful. That is a lovely, lovely, beautiful perfume. And it photographs really, really nicely. And in some of the stores that you can buy it in, they'll also engrave your name onto it, um, which is lovely. So Chanel number no. five is beautiful. And it photographs lovely too. Um, this is another really, really popular one. Joe Malone, Peony and Blush. 
I'd say at every other wedding now, I'm seeing this. It is just so popular. I don't know how it's become so popular. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's recommending it. And maybe everybody loves it. But honestly, um, it's up there definitely with the Chanel number no. five. Now, this is one of my favourite perfumes. It is bloody expensive um, and it's called Baccarat Rouge. And I don't know how many times people would say to me, oh my God, what are you wearing? <gasps> What's that scent? It's called Baccarat Rouge and it is to die for. I love it, um, but it's expensive. Tom Ford. Um, there's a lot of Tom Ford perfumes that I see quite a bit out there. Um, you know, and, and again, I would say go and, you know, give them a sniff. <laughs> brown thumbs and make sure you like them because while there are some Tom Ford perfumes that I absolutely love there's some Tom Ford perfumes that I absolutely despise so just make sure that it's again the perfume for you Chloe perfume is the one that I said that I bought for my own wedding and I just did not like the scent of it that's just me you might love it I just wasn't mad about it but I do see that quite a lot this is another one actually I only saw this the other day the flowering floral wedding fragrance and by flower bomb by Victor and Rolf that's really, really popular. And it's got like a little silver or is it gold plate on the front with, with the name of the perfume on it. And I love photographing that. I'm a sucker for details when it comes to photographs. Obviously, I am at a wedding, but when I went the detail photographs on the morning, I love to kind of place the perfume and I love to kind of use the natural daylight. And I love that particular bottle because it's just really nice to photograph. And I love, you know, using a macro lens and zooming in on the detail um, when it comes to the name. And it's also a really nice scent as well. Uh, Charlotte Tilbury scent of a dream now that is beautiful and the packaging is beautiful and the price is even more beautiful <laughs> but it is a gorgeous gorgeous perfume and like I'm not lying here these are the perfumes that I come across like a lot um, Dolce, uh, Dolce & Gabbana light blue that's a lovely scent it's actually a very light scent um, and a lot of people uh, like to wear that. And in my opinion, it's a very uh, summer scent as well. So um, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. This is another one of my favourites. Now, you swear I was into perfumes. I'm not really. I, am, I probably only have about three perfumes. Hermes is another one that I love. But Portrait of a Lady um, by Frederick Mal, I think is how you pronounce his name. Portrait of a Lady. Oh, guys, honest to God, that is... How did I even hear about it? Well, I did see it at the odd wedding, but I, I you know, got the scent off a bride before and I was like, oh, what is that? Show me. Um, in my opinion, it's my opinion, the packaging isn't amazing. Like it's in a black box um, and it's fine, you know, but the scent is absolutely to die for. And number 10, because I'm only giving you my top 10, is another Chanel one and it's Mademoiselle. I come across that quite a bit. Um, you know what it comes on? It comes to putting on your perfume on the wedding morning. Um, a lot of people kind of spray it in the air and walk towards it and let the scent, you know, you know, um, go all over their body. I just say, guys, just put it on <laughs> the way you normally put it on, seriously. Put a squirt or two behind each ear and put a squirt here. Um, and another tip I would give you about um, putting perfume on in the day, do that because then it's on you. Um, but if you have a veil, just get one of your bridesmaids to spray loads of it onto your veil because as you're walking up the aisle then, um, that's a scent then that absolutely everybody is going to get while you're walking by them. They're like, what are you wearing? Anyway, so that's it with wedding shoes and wedding perfume for now. And now I'm going to go on and talk about the speeches. Briefly enough, I'm not going to be telling you who should say what, um, but I'm going to just talk about, you know, who normally speaks. Um, and again, when I get asked this question, I'd always say it's a difficult enough one to answer because what's traditional is traditional. And, you know, some people want to be a little bit different. But again, I would always say to couples, make your wedding speeches and make your entire day about what you want, not what everybody else is has done or is doing. Um, you decide. But I suppose, you know, when I get asked, they're sort of asking me traditionally what um, what way should we um, do the speeches and what's the correct order? And, um, you know, and when you think, I suppose, nowadays of kind of who gets married, you know, you've a bride, you've a groom, you've mixed gender bridal parties, you've brides with brides, you've grooms with grooms. So it all depends on sort of, you know, what suits the two of you. But in terms of what's traditionally done, um, or, and who speaks um, would usually be, you know, you'd generally sort of pick an MC, which is normally the best man if he's a good speaker. And what he would do then is, you know, stand up to start with and, you know, say hello to everybody and introduce himself. 
And then he introduces then all of the speakers. Um, and this is kind of traditionally what happens, okay? So he would introduce the father of the bride would generally go first. Then the father of the groom would generally go second and the groom and the best man. And that's kind of how, um, you know, what order they come in. Now, I've seen lots and lots of different ways of doing speeches. I've seen lots of different people speaking at speeches. I've seen them, you know, taking place at different times during the day and, and during the evening. I had Tyg, the gorgeous Tyg from Tankerstown in here like a little while ago, and he was saying how he likes to see them being done. He loves all of the speeches to be done at the end of the meal. But I was doing a wedding there a couple of weeks ago in uh, Mark Creek Castle, and they had their speeches before everybody was brought in and seated for the meal, which was actually a nice way of doing it, I thought, um, because they allowed that time and they took that time from their drinks reception to do the speeches. And then that sort of way, when everybody went in to have their meal, everybody was able to have their meal and enjoy it. And there were no speeches at the end. And that was a lovely way of doing it. And it was sort of um, much more informal when it was done um, at the drinks reception because everybody came out and they were just cause sort of standing at the top of the stairs. And that's how they did it as well. You know, father of the bride, father of the groom, um, the groom and the best man. That's how they they did theirs. And it was lovely. And people really kind of appreciated that time um, uh, during the drinks uh, reception, you know. There's so many other uh, factors to consider when planning the order of speeches at a wedding. Um, you know, like the couple's parents both might want to speak, you know, so typically and traditionally the father of the the groom would get up. But, you know, there's I was talking to somebody the other day and she was saying, I know your dad wants to speak, but I'd like to say a few words as well. I'm your mother. And and I get that, too. You know, so um, if mums want to speak, let them speak. So, you know, then you've got four people. <laughs> The hotels are going to kill me now for saying all this because they don't want 55 people speaking. But, you know, if they want to speak, let them speak. Um, sometimes, you know, you might have a maid of honour who wants to say a few words instead of the bride getting up to speak. And that's absolutely OK. Again, I was in Adair Manor a couple of weeks ago and we had the bride's sister who got up and she spoke. And that was lovely. That was really, really nice because she just spoke about the bride, which was really nice, you know. Um, because when you have a best man standing up, he generally talks about the groom and he tells a few few funny stories about the groom. And if you don't have somebody else speaking on the bride's behalf, you're you're going to have her dad then talking um, about her, you know, on his behalf. But you don't have somebody her age talking about her on on their behalf. So it is kind of nice actually to get a friend or a maid of honor. Um, the couple speaking, I actually decided at my own wedding to speak because I just sort of felt that and and. <laughs> probably, of course you did, they want to speak, Jenny, you never shut up. But actually, there was loads of people in the room that, you know, I wanted to thank too. And I didn't want to leave all of that up to Martin. And of course, I wanted to thank Martin too, because um, I think he was, yeah, that was special. And uh, I felt that needed to be done. So I do believe that um, if the bride wants to speak, absolutely let her speak, you know. Um, and there are different people and different, you know, um, suppliers um, that you might want to to thank as well. Um, you know, typically within the speeches, the bridesmaids are thanked, the wedding venue is thanked, the parents are th thanked, the groom is thanked, the groom talks about the bride and sometimes he forgets to talk about the bride. Would you believe that? Honestly, like every now and again, um, the groom... <laughs> is so fixated on thanking this person, thanking that person, thanking all the people who have travelled and forgets all about the bride. And that's kind of not good, you know, because you get into trouble. There'd be no nuki that night. <laughs> so it's funny, um, you know, when you think that you're really, really, really organised when it comes to the speeches. But, you know, have a serious think about who you need to thank and what you need to say. Um, and I suppose I'm going to part by saying... Um, speeches don't have to go on for an hour. In actual fact, if they go on for an hour, people, your guests start to lose the will to live, you know. Um, and you, you'll know then as soon as the, fin the speeches stop, there's a big, you know, mass exodus from the room. Everybody wants to go to the toilet. So I would reckon, and honestly, and this is not just because I don't want to be standing around photographing them happening, um, 
I would reckon, you know, five minutes to seven minutes per person is absolutely all you need. Um, and when a father of a bride gets up to speak, he really shouldn't go through his daughter's entire CV. Nobody wants to hear about it. You know, a couple of funny stories about his daughter is absolutely ample and five to seven minutes is absolutely loads. The same for the father of the groom. Um, the groom can go on a little bit longer, I suppose, because it's his day and the best man as well, you know, again, five to seven minutes. And I suppose one of the key things I would say when it comes to, you know, speeches and especially best man, never, ever, ever mention any exes. <laughs> Like, I know that probably, you know, should be an unwritten rule and it is an unwritten rule, but I absolutely, I have written a book. I keep saying that I could write a book. I have written a book and it'll be out soon, but I could actually write another book on the amount of times that um, best man mention an ex. Nobody wants to hear about it. Um, don't mention any exes in the past. It doesn't matter how funny you think it is. Um, lots of other people um, may think that it is not so funny. Um, and like I said, when it comes to speeches, I'm actually going to have somebody in uh, talking to me for a full podcast episode about speeches and who has to be thanked and what really needs to be said. Um, and also about making it uh, about your day and being as personal as you can um, when it comes to your speeches. But there are things that do need to be said during your wedding speeches. And, uh, and that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed. 